I'm taking a look at this Asden PCS 5000 2 meter ham radio transceiver. And what I'm going to do today is just program a repeater pair into a memory channel on this radio. The first thing I'll do is explain some of the features of this radio. I'm not going to go through everything on this radio, but I'll explain the basics um, to help understand how the memory system works in this radio. So I'll start with the display. First of all, you can see here that there is an A. And what that signifies is which memory bank the radio is in. It has two banks of 10 channels, bank A and bank B. And the channel number is indicated here. Uh, the channels are 0 through 9. Here, of course, is the receive frequency that's displayed. Um, the hold indicator up here is for scanning mode. And then down here, this indicator, M mode, indicates whether the radio is in memory channel mode or if it's in VFO tuning mode. And then of course over here is a simple um, SRF meter. This switch down here controls which memory bank the radio is accessing at any given time. When the switch is set to A mode, then it accesses bank A, channel 0 through 9. Same thing with, with B, it accesses bank B, channel 0 through 9. When it's set to the A-B mode, the radio can access the channels in both banks, A and B. This is especially useful if you want to scan all 20 memory channels at once. The last mode down here, the AXB, allows for non-standard repeater splits. Um, in other words, the channel in bank A will be the receive frequency, and the channel in bank B would be the transmit frequency. I'm not going to go into odd repeater splits uh, on this radio today. Down here, these buttons control whether or not the transmit CTCSS or PL tone is enabled. Uh, this controls the high-low power and this can reverse the um, transmit and receive frequencies that are programmed in a memory channel. Uh, this button on my radio no longer works. Um, it was broken and I internally shorted it. So the CTCSS tone is always on on this radio no matter what. Over here is the programming keypad. Uh, this allows us to enter in frequencies directly when in VFO mode or access memory channels when in memory mode. And then over here, of course, we have the um, on-off switch and volume control. And then the one over here with the missing knob is the squelch control. So as you can see, right now, the radio is in memory mode, indicated by the M dot mode indicator here, and it's in memory channel 0. If I want to access another memory channel, I'll just push the button of the memory channel I want to go to. You can see I've got some things programmed in these other memory channels. But for now, I'm going to go back to memory channel 0, as this is the one that I want to overwrite. In order to set up a repeater frequency, I'm going to first put the radio into VFO mode. And that's accomplished by pushing the M slash D button and seeing that the M mode indicator on the LCD disappears. Once that disappears, I know that I'm in VFO mode and can directly enter a frequency from the keypad. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm going to enter in the receive frequency of the repeater that I'm interested in, which happens to be 147.105. Now I'm not going to enter the whole frequency. As you can see here on the LCD display, the 1 and the 4 are small, and then the, the rest of the display is bigger. So I'm going to start with the kilohertz um, register, and I'm going to enter in the 7, and then 105. Once I get that entered in, I'm going to push this Enter key to store that into the VFO register. The next thing I'll want to do is select the repeater offset so that when the radio transmits, it shifts the correct way and transmits on the correct frequency. In order to accomplish that, I'm just going to push the Shift key once. And you can see here that the plus indicator lights up, indicating that the radio will shift positive 600 kilohertz. And of course this being um, above 147 megahertz plus is the correct direction. If this were less than 147, I'd want to change that to the minus offset so that the transmit frequency would shift lower. 
The next thing that I'll want to do is enter in the PL or CTCSS tone needed to access this repeater. These ASDEN radios use sort of an index table that cross-references an index number to a specific uh, CTCSS tone. So here's the chart as you can see. You can pause the video if you want to write these down and I'm sure this is available online if, uh, if you'd want to look this up and print out a copy for yourself. For this repeater, I'll need a tone of 162.2 Hz in order to access it. And I've looked at the index table and I've determined that um, I need to use index number 26 to access that tone. Now all I have to do is first make sure that nothing else is active as far as programming or anything like that goes on the radio. And again in VFO mode, all I have to do is enter in that index number which happens to be 26 for my tone. You can see here the LCD is blinking with the 26. Once I have that entered in, I just want to hit this PRI or TNW as you can see above the key, which stands for tone right. So just push that button and you can hear two double beeps, which indicates that tone was accepted. So now this repeater should be programmed into the VFO and ready to use. So I'll just do a quick demonstration here. I'll key the repeater so that you can see uh, that I've got it programmed in correctly. Here you should be able to see on the S meter that the repeater heard my key and uh, was able to uh, be accessed. Just as a side note, you should always um, when keying up a repeater, you should always ID, never just kerchunk the repeater. Uh, it's not only uh, technically illegal, it's also bad practice. So I did ID um, off camera. Now that I've got the repeater programmed into the VFO memory and I've verified that uh, everything is working and set up properly, I can now write this to a memory channel. So first thing that I'm going to do is make sure that I'm still in VFO mode. There's no M mode icon down here. Um, then I'm going to make sure that I uh, have a memory channel in mind that I want to program into. So in my case, I'm going to program this into memory channel 0 of bank A. And I can verify I'm in bank A. Turn this uh, bank mode. You can see that the A is lit. So now all I need to do is push the MW key and you'll see here that this memory channel is blinking which indicates it's ready to write into a memory channel the information that's in the VFO register. So all I'm going to do is simply push the corresponding number to the channel that I want to program. So in my case I'm going to push 0 but if I wanted to choose one of the other channels I would just push one of those buttons. So once I push that button the VFO information has been written to that memory channel. Now I can verify that that has been written to memory by going into memory mode by pushing that button. You can see memory mode is active and I'm currently on channel 5. So now if I just push the 0 key that will bring me to memory channel 0 and you can see that everything is entered in the way that it should be. So just to verify that everything is set in, uh, in the memory mode correctly I can key the radio up, give my call sign, and then see if I'm accessing the repeater, if I can hear its squelch tail. Okay, and you can see there that I did uh, have a squelch tail. You might not have heard it in the speaker. It was a little bit quiet, but, um, but it's definitely accessing it. So that's pretty much all there is to programming a standard repeater into a memory channel on this ASDEN PCS5000 2 meter ham radio transceiver. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. And if you'd like to subscribe or leave a comment, feel free to do that as well. Thanks for watching.